Good morning. Welcome to the Vinyl Siding Institute webinar. Uh, this, I'm Gary Weinert from Vanmark Products. This is Rich Wagner, also from Vanmark Products. We're going to kind of show you the brakes and how they work with the installation of vinyl siding and trim, and also another tool called the trim -a table which is another uh, very time-saving tool you might be able to use when you're installing that. With this, I'll turn it over to Rich to start in on the bending brake. This is our base model brake. Uh, Van Mark's been building brakes since 1964. Um, this brake isn't too far off from that style back when the company was founded and started. Um, the brakes that I'll show you beyond here will have a lot more capacities. Um, and what I mean by that, the capacity here, um, the the clamping bar does not lift up very high to where it restricts the amount of metal that you can put into the brake. The throat depth is shallow, um, so putting a 24 inch piece of trim on here makes it difficult. Um, it doesn't have the rail system for a trim cutter. Uh, so now you gotta cut it with a razor blade, you know, cut your material off and then you bend it back and forth and snap it off. Um, this is a cam, style locking system. It's done with metal wedges. Um, you have to grease them. So you're going to put oil on there um, and then you would actually pop this off. You put oil in there. There's more maintenance to this. Um, you know you want to do that every roughly every 40 hours of, of work. This brake is still used today. Um, you know it's a, it's a basic siding brake. You can do simple shapes with it. Um, you can do all the coverings on your house with it, but it's more of an entry level. So I'm going to show you how it works. So you open it up like this, take a piece of trim, lock it in place, and you can bend it. Moving on to what professional siding installers use. Um, here are our two most popular brakes. Uh, this is the Metal Master 20, and this is the uh, Mark II Trim Master. Um, this is a 20 inch throat brake, and this is a 14 inch throat brake. So what we're talking about with a throat depth, this is a 14 inch throat, so that's from the heel to the front of the base hinge, which the base hinge is not attached here. And this is a 20 inch. 20 inch casting. All right, next I'm going to show you how the brake operates as a system. So, this is your coil dispenser, holds trim coil. You can take the trim, pull it all the way down the brake, cut it off, and then you can have a full sheet. Uh, but for demonstration purposes, I'm going to cut a little sheet. So, you can cross cut off the coil dispenser and take your trim cutter, place it on your brake and you can rip the distance all the way down. Gives you a factory edge. Next I'm going to show you how to just do uh, some bending with the brake and kind of its capabilities. So I'm going to bend a window casement with a built-in J with our trim former to create the uh, brick mold detail. Normally you have to measure this out, so you're going to measure your your bends where they're going to lay on a uh, on a built-in J. This is a uh, inch and a half. It sticks out. I use three fingers just for demonstration purposes, but you normally mark all these marks out. So I'm going to go 90 there, flip it over, go 150 roughly degrees. Now I'm going to hem. This is an important step. A lot of people don't realize you do it like this to where you lift the hinge up and actually hem the material. A lot of people want to put it in the brake and smash it. That's not the proper way. It's you lift the hinge up, drop it in, and put it, push it in. 
So there's your built-in J. There's a built-in J detail of the brick mold and then the face. I'll do one more for you. I'm gonna do an outside corner post. Once again, you start off with like the inch and a half, almost the same steps as the brick mold. See, this is nice with the larger mouth opening. If, if you remember in the uh, uh, trimmer table uh, portion, the older style brake, that mouth didn't work, so you wouldn't be able to fit that J channel in there like that. outside corner post. Let's, let's talk about the coil dispenser. Um, the coil dispenser keeps your trim coil free from being damaged. Load your coil dispenser. Roll it back. Preload it, ready to go. The nice thing with the coil dispenser and the trim cutter, pull your trim out. You can cross cut. Stick it in your brake. And rip the distance. Here are some of the most popular shapes made on the brake. This is a three-quarter inch J with a hem. This is used around windows, doors, uh, almost anywhere. This is a very useful shape. Drip cap. This is made to use uh, on roof lines or above um, windows. F channel. This is used generally going up the rake of the building or underneath the soffit so it would receive the siding and then the soffit panel. Miter. This is used usually in the corners of the soffit so, or this is sometimes re referred to as an H channel as well. So you can join two pieces of the building together or you can put it in the soffit and join the corner together. This one's a little bit more complicated. So this is a window casement with a three-quarter built-in J with the brick mold detail on it. And so where I would use this is like on a garage door. So you're covering up your garage door. You got your nice brick detail. You put in your siding. Your face is covered here. And then it's finished off with a piece of sill trim. So you just bend that over a few times. This way you can hide your nails. 
and then an outside corner post. So this is used on the outside portion of your building. Um, if you wanted to do an inside corner post when you build in these two sides, just reverse the bend and then you can make it an inside corner post. When you make that decision to purchase a brake, um, there are many different sizes and capacities. Um, to find a brake that best fits your needs, you'll either could contact us, go to a trade show, go to a distributor, uh, a lot of them have them set up. Um, but if you're doing anything from roofing, siding, you know, or just flashings, um, we can get you into the right brake that fits your needs. This, I like to call this a system. Um, this is a Metal Master 20. Uh, this comes with brake. You, you can do just the brake, but it, if you wanted a system, you'd want to get a brake, a stand, um, a trim cutter, and then the coil dispenser. Uh, this works together as a system. This is all you really need to make the money. You have different attributes. You could, you know, like a trim former, you can get the extra details. It'll roll a one inch rib. It's got a little bit of a crown mold. And then, you know, you got gauges like multi-gauge. This will tell you where your cutoff uh, lands and then it tells you the different angles. I'm Rich Wagner, thank you for your time today. Um, I'm gonna pass uh, the webinar over to Gary Weinert. He's gonna show you our saw table. All right, well, thanks, Rich, for the information on the brakes. Uh, guys, as you get into the business, you'll find the brake is one of the most profitable and efficient tools to really help you do your job on the job site. That being said, another Vanmark tool that'll really help increase your efficiency and your productivity is the trim table. We have a model TAT60 set up, and it's, we've got it set up on a set of our steel folding legs. The folding legs are probably the best option for setting it up. Uh, you can use sawhorses and things, but much like with a brake, it just doesn't uh, give you the stability of these legs. So the table, when you are cutting siding, soffit, uh, you're going to have soffits. Uh, most of the siding and soffits are 12 foot long, anywhere from 10 to 12 to 14 to 16 inches. When you get into the specialty sidings, they're going to be 3 to 4 feet by 21. 24, even 28 inches, maybe over 30 at points. You're gonna to have to cut angles on these as well as 90 degrees. That can all be done very safely and efficiently on the Vanmark trim table. So the table as it's sitting up here, it has a boom. When you're gonna set your table up, the boom, may, the boom may be on the truck or have it right on the table like that. You're simply going to expand these main decks out you take this, which has a collar built in, and you'll find the post. You line those up, and you drop that on. That installs your boom. So from an efficiency point of view, you're starting your day. It's very quick to set up. You pull it off the truck, fold the legs down, expand it out, and put the boom on. So how does this help you become efficient on the job site? You're going to be cutting things. We'll start with some siding. You're gonna cut panel siding panels, traditionally 12 foot long. They will tend to wiggle around, I guess is the best way to term it. Uh, many ways to cut it. The table gives you a very efficient work surface, so you're not laying the product down on the ground. You're not freehand cutting it with a saw. You're not cutting it with snips, which you can, uh, if anyone's ever cut with snips, you can occasionally take a little divot out of your hand here and there if you're not careful. So what this allows you to do is just, you can lay that piece of siding or soffit on there and it takes it, um, holds it in place for the cut. So this table is set up with a boom. The boom is set up to accept most of the full shoe seven and a quarter inch circular saws. We'll grab one here. So this one is pre-set up for this saw but it's very easy to adjust. You simply take your saw, you set the blade into the recessed saw blade track, and you move the rails to your saw. At the beginning of the day, you drop your saw in. It's now captured in the boom and ready to go to work. You now can expand these decks out either way. When the table was uh, in the truck or ready to be set up, it was eight feet in length. 
As you expand it out, it'll expand out up to 18 feet. The benefit there is you, most of your siding panels are 12 feet long. So even if you're cutting two feet off the end, you have nine of the 10 feet extended out there. So you're not dealing with a piece of siding that's wiggling around on you. It's fully supported onto your table. To expand those decks, they simply slide. And then we have, on the end, they have rails that go further out. So you can extend that out and support that panel all the way down to the cut. The, the table expands nine feet each way off center where the cut happens. So again, 12 foot panels, even if you're only cutting a foot or two off, you've got the bulk of the panel supported out there. So your rear fences, which are also, you can move these around or you can lock them in place. Your rear fences are your automatic squaring device. When you put that piece of siding in there, it's squared up. You predetermine your angles. The boom spins. It's simple as if you're doing some soffit and you have 90 degree bends, you simply push the panels in, that squares your table up. The table locks very easily. The knob simply tightens the collar on the post. Now you can expand your table back out. Imagine that's a piece of soffit. Start your saw, bring your saw back through and cut the piece of soffit. You've made an automatic 90 degree cut. There's also on the table, you can't really see it in the video, but there is a protractor plate that shows degrees of angle. It also shows roof pitches. Let's say you're doing a bunch of soffits and you're coming into the corner and you want 45s. You simply move that table to the 45 degree mark. Again, lock that boom, slide your panels in, square them up, cut the panel. Very efficient, saves you a lot of time. It's up at a good working height. You're not climbing down on the ground cutting. Again, not cutting it with snips. When you get into the bigger panels, and away from just the standard sidings, we've just got a, a two course cedar shake panel here. You'll notice that sometimes this comes out further than the initial table. So the top deck is roughly 10 inches made to support double four, double five sidings. When you get into the bigger pieces, that's where the wings are on here. So that supports it. So again, that piece, well, it might flip around a little bit as you're moving it. Once you put that into the table and square that up, it's all set, it's fully supported. Again, you're doing 90s, bring it back through, you're doing angles, you move it to there. It also has memory stops. So if you know, let's just say you're doing soffit. You know you're doing all 90s and 45s on your soffit. Well, the 90 you can square up easily by bringing your table over. You go to the 45, you move this into place, and now you can go back and forth between 90 and 45 without aligning it at the protractor plate every time. So again, it just adds a lot of efficiency there. It's all about efficiency and saving time. The tool's very easy to use. It's very user friendly. Uh, it's also easy to maintain. You just need to clean it. As you're cutting, you're gonna have little dust and chips and things. So maybe just blow it out with an air hose and clean it on a regular basis. Um, Again, we showed it disassembled, but at the end of the day, you're gonna load it back in the truck. You're simply gonna remove your saw. You remove your boom. Fold your table down. and you've got it stored. Also has a convenient carry can handle. It's uh, fairly lightweight. So when you are moving it around in the morning or on the job site, you can grab the boom with one hand, pick it up, fold the legs, pick it up with the handle with the other and just move it e easily from the truck or wherever you're storing it. So again, the Vanmark tools, you know, we're all about the efficiency, make your job more productive, make your job a little bit easier. And at the end of the day, it makes the job more profitable.
So that coupled with our brakes just gives you a good kind of starter set of tools to do your job well. So uh, thank you for your time. We appreciate it. Have a good day. Click subscribe for more videos.